Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking about fractional distillation of crude oil. Crude oil actually is one of the three fossil fuels of which we have a limited or finite supply. So the fossil fuels are coal, oil and natural gas. Now crude oil itself is a mixture of what are called hydrocarbons and that's where this process comes in. So what I've got in the middle of the screen here is what's called a fractioning column and fractional distillation only differs from normal distillation in that it is allowing us to separate a mixture into a number of different parts or fractions as they're called. So let's just first of all talk about the components of crude oil. So I said that crude oil was a mixture of what are called hydrocarbons and you might be able to guess from the name that these contain atoms of only one type, of two types rather, those belonging to hydrogen and those of carbon. So for example if I were to talk about methane, so methane gas CH4, that is a hydrocarbon, it contains only carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. Whereas if I think about the ester ethyl ethanoate, that actually has some oxygens in. So that wouldn't be a hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons only, and I'll write one, just for completeness sake, Ethan. Hydrocarbons only contain hydrogen and carbon atoms. Now, if we think of hydrocarbon chains that make up crude oil, if we were to draw them as group of red circles. Each red circle here, so each one represents one carbon atom. What we do in this fractioning column is ultimately separate this hydrocarbon, long hydrocarbon chain into smaller ones, smaller more useful fractions or hydrocarbon chains. So let's talk about the actual process. Heated crude oil we have coming in at the bottom. Now it's heated and it enters the column as vapour. Now those vapours in that column pass through all these different sort of layers if you like and they're allowed to condense at different points. Very large molecules with very high boiling points will condense lower down and smaller molecules with low boiling points will actually condense much higher up. And it's because we have this temperature gradient at the bottom of this fractioning column. It's very, very hot. It's about 350 degrees C. But at the top, it's very, very cool. And that allows these hydrocarbons to condense at varying levels. So let's talk about what we actually get from this crude oil. So at the bottom, actually at 340 degrees, we're left with a chunk of residue, if you like. Now that residue, as it says, can be used for fuel for ships and for lubricating oil. But a significant portion of that residue is called bitumen, B-I-T-U-M-E-N. And that can be used for roads and roofs. Now above that, at 260 degrees, we have diesel oil that can be used for diesel engines essentially. Now sometimes um, pictures of these fractional column include it, sometimes they're not, but actually between the residue, and might just add this separately, between the residue and the diesel oil you actually can get what's called fuel oil as a fraction separated off there and that can be used as a fuel for ships and power stations. So we have diesel oil, which is a, a fuel for diesel engines. Then slightly higher up, a bit cooler, I say cooler, at 180 degrees C, kerosene, which is used as jet fuel. fuel. Now kerosene is sometimes referred to as paraffin. So I'll just put that in there, just in case that's something that you see. Then higher up at 110, we get what's called naphtha. Now, naphtha is used to make chemicals, so it's got there, used in chemical production. 
a little higher up we get gasoline or petrol. Now that is used as a fuel for cars. And I'm just going to use this as, as my example. Because if we were to look at the number of carbons in the hydrocarbon chain in petrol, we'd actually see something like this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually only about eight carbons in that chain. So it's a much smaller length. In fact, the initial hydrocarbon chain in this heated crude oil, this contains about 70 plus carbons. Whereas in petrol, we're looking at around eight. So that's just to show the difference that you have and that this whole process of fractional distillation is allowing you to obtain more useful, smaller hydrocarbon substances. And then at the very, very top, where it's the coolest, we have the refinery gases or bottled gas. Now, one example of this sort of refinery gas, if you like, is something called LPG liquefied petroleum gas and that contains mostly propane and butane now i've mentioned some of these terms like methane propane butane these are all mentioned in a separate video that i make on alkanes and alkenes so that's worth watching so we've got refinery gas at the top so this whole process of fractional distillation revolves around this one tall column fitted above the mixture with these several condensers coming off at different heights. Column is hot, the column is hot at the bottom, cool at the top, and those substances with high boiling points condense at the bottom, those with low boiling points condense at the top. And like distillation, fractional distillation works because these different substances in the mixture have these different boiling points. It should be said that each fraction actually contains hydrocarbon molecules with a similar number of carbon atoms. So, just to finish, what I'd like to do is, if I imagine during that's the big arrow here, because what I want to do is talk about the properties of some of these hydrocarbons that come off of this fractioning column. Because the ones at the bottom are very different to the ones at the top. The ones at the top, if we start there, are much smaller. These molecules are smaller. So if I smaller dot mole dot, that means molecules. So these molecules are smaller and they have very low boiling points. They are also very We call volatile, very reactive. So small with low boiling points, very volatile, and because of that, they flow and ignite easily. So there's some properties of those that you find at the top of the fractioning column. But in stark contrast, those at the bottom are a little bit different. The ones we found at the bottom are larger. These are larger molecules that are being separated at the bottom. And as I've said, these have very high boiling points. You can see I'm really just doing the reverse of what's at the top. These ones at the bottom, these ones that come off the bottom, so we're talking the fuel oil, diesel oil, and to a degree this mm, kerosene to a point. These are not very volatile and because of that and I, I'm running out of room so I won't write it in but these do not flow very easily and they do not ignite very easily either and that kind of serves and helps serve the purpose for what they're used for so this video is all about fractional distillation of crude oil a simple mixture of hydrocarbons and separating this mixture out into individual fractions okay hope all that helps